Okay, well the fish are safely returned. I've just tied a couple of rigs up fresh, ready to go, so I thought I'd take the time out to tell you guys how to tie it, because that is the question that I have been asked many, many times. So I'll run you through it. It's very simple, and that's one of the nicest things about this rig. Although you can't change the hook really quickly like you can with a lot of the modern day rigs, as far as rig tying goes, this is a simple one. You know, a couple of bits of tubing and a knotless knot really, that is about it. So if you're uh, not into your fiddly rig tying, you don't like it to take ages, don't worry because this one doesn't. So first thing you need to do is take a length of end trap. I use the 20 pound semi stiff, 20 or 15. The key thing is that the braid isn't too supple that it's gonna tangle and it isn't too stiff to allow it to poke up off the bottom. You want it soft enough to settle nicely against the lake bed. So I choose a 20 pound end trap. Um, sometimes I use the 15. The coatings vary on all braids. No matter which one you buy, if you use them for years and years, you will notice slight changes in how stiff they are. That's just the way of the world. Um, but yeah, if you're gonna choose to use a different braid, you want one that isn't too stiff and isn't too supple. Well, you then need to remove four inches of the coating from the braid. I measure that nicely against the rig board. It's really important that your measurements are logged. And if I was you, I would write these down as you go along. So remove four inches of the coating from the braid and that will reveal the Dyneema core. It's much suppler and it's perfect for constructing the next part of the rig, the hair loop. Keep it nice and small. You don't want a massive one. I try to keep it around about 10 mil in size. You don't want to use up too much of the braid and you certainly don't want a loop so big that it's going to be poking out the bottom of your bait. So a nice small hair loop is what you're aiming for. Once you've formed the hair loop, you now need to pull around about 10 inches of the braid off of the spool. So in total, you've got sort of 10 to 14 inches of braid. Give yourself a little bit to work with. Trim that off with a pair of scissors and then it comes the hook. And I use a size four Kamakura pre-sharpened, absolutely razor, and they are my favorite hook by a mile. To begin with though, I did use size six wide gates with this presentation, so it's up to you really. If you prefer a size six, then you're more than welcome to use that. If you'd like a four, go with that. The next thing to do is to fix the hook in place, and I do that using a very simple knotless knot. I keep the hair around about 10, 12 mil in length. You can have them longer if you want, but I keep mine nice and short, and then I'll extend them at a later date if needs be. So. Position the hair, whip round four or five times, and that will give me two centimetres of braid above the hook's eye. So when I check that on my rig board, the piece of braid between the coating and the hook, that needs to be two centimetres long. And that is the perfect amount to ensure that once I put my tubing on and my shot on, I've got the correct length of supple braid between those two parts. So that's a very important part. From the top of the eye to the start of the, the coating on the braid, you want it to be two centimetres. Once you've done that, the next thing you need to do is take a length of shrink tubing and cut it almost in half. I cut an inch off, that's the piece that goes down onto the hook and that leaves you with just over an inch. So you take that inch piece, then you need to use a splicing needle, pierce the tubing very carefully with a needle at about two mil inside the top of the tubing so that your braid will exit that just below the top of the tubing once you thread it on. Pull that down onto your rig and slide that over onto the eye of the hook. But before you do that, put a bit of saliva on there, that'll make it a bit easier to slip on. Once the tubing is slid onto the hook, you then need to check that where your braid is exiting the tubing, that that is level with the, the point of the hook and on the same side as the eye is facing. So the eye is in turned on this pattern and you need to make sure that where your braid exits, is bang in line with the point on that side, inside the hook. The other thing you need to make sure of is that you've got the tube in half on the hook, half off. So you've got half inch above the eye and half inch past the eye. That's very important. With the hook secured in place, it's now time to form the loop at the opposite end of the rig. And before I do that, I place my hook against the rig board and then very carefully measure seven inches from the bottom of the hook where the bend is, from that point up onto the seven inch mark of the rig board, and then I grab it, form a loop there. And the loop that I tie is a three turn grinner knot. The reason I do that is because many years ago I was told that standard loop knots and alike are strangulation type knots and they can weaken under pressure. Whereas a grinner knot, it isn't a strangulation knot and it actually pulls tighter, doesn't cut into itself under pressure. So I've always used that knot, but in reality, I'm sure you can use whichever loop you wish to use. But if you're wondering why I choose to do the slightly fiddly one, that is why. With the loop formed, it's now time to add your other piece of shrink tubing 
the piece that you had left over from the original cut, slide that down over the loop and over the knot that you've just formed and you'll see that I've left a relatively long tag. That is just to be on the safe side. And once you've put that bit of shrink tubing on there, the last thing almost that you've got to add is a piece of putty. Not quite halfway down the rig. You want it, I would say, millimetres above halfway. Um, the reason for that, to pin the rig down. That's very important. It, not only does it pin it down, it will help to push the rig away. And then last but not least, just above the tubing, at the bottom of the rig, you want to add a shot. I use a number one split shot and that is big enough to sink all the pop-ups that I tend to use with this rig. It's very rare that I whack a big one on there. They're normally 12 mil, 10 mil, small ones like that. Or if you do want to use a bigger pop-up, you've got two options. You either use the bigger shot or you take your big pop-up and then you add some weight to the pop-up. You can drill out the base of them, plug a bit of putty in there, maybe a little bit of lead wire. You know, there's, there's plenty of ways you can do it, but you're going to have to do one of two things should you wish to use a much bigger pop-up. You need a heavier shot or you need to take a bit of the buoyancy away from your hook bait. The choice is yours. You need to make sure that shot is gripping right against the end of the coating on the braid. You don't want it sat past there or you know when it's sat up onto the coating either. It needs to be butted up nicely where that coating starts, that's where your shot wants to grab a hold. Once you've done that, you need to drop the whole lot at either end at a time into a kettle. So tail end of the rig first, that goes into the kettle to steam down the piece of tubing over the loop. And by doing that, you're almost creating an anti-tangle sleeve. So rather than having to thread one on and off all the time, you've got one on the rig permanently. And then the other end goes in, shrink the tubing down and then shape the tubing accordingly. Don't want too much of an aggressive angle. I tend to follow pretty much the shape of the eye, maybe a tiny bit more inside, so that the braid is exiting the tubing just level with the point. There's a very specific reason why I have the braid leaving the tubing early and incorporate it with the angle in the tubing, and that is to get the hook to flip and turn. It's something I was shown a long time ago by a friend of mine, Gav, and I've used it in pretty much all of my rigs ever since. Certainly all of the ones that incorporate rig tubing. And I believe it makes a big difference. You can tie this rig up, two variations, one with the liner liner and one without it. And I can promise you the one with the liner liner, when you pull it across your hand, will feel by far the more aggressive of the two rigs. And once you've done that, there's only one thing left to do, and that is to mount the hook bait. And as you can see here, I've gone for a 12 mil little white pop-up which these carp, I'm sure, will snap up.